to John Lee because I promise so that's all uh, I want to say that this is the first annual Carol Pittman costume award the first award goes to Alan and Steven I will not sleep for a couple of weeks Alan as a clown is like you can't imagine and I, I gotta say the number one costume prize goes to the Willards. Are you kidding me? David and Moira Rose? That was so nice! I thought I was like the only one who liked Shit's Creek, but it's not. It's true. It was wonderful. It was great. The next time we see each other, we will have, I don't know how to say it, we'll have an election. I didn't want to say we'll have a new president, but we'll have an election. We will have an election on November 3rd. And I hope at this point that you have, hi John, hi Lisa, I can't get you that way. I want to say hi to everybody. This is what Steph told us last week. She said, this means hug in sign language. So we, so here's, here's to you and theirs. Um, so this is really important. If you have not voted, please, please vote. It is your right as an American citizen Please, please vote. And I want to read you this from what we've been going through. 
I had a, a, a someone who is is soliciting me to get a concealed carry weapon licensed over the mail. All I had to do was fill out a couple things, and I have a concealed carry carry weapon. And then the next couple of days, I got some solicitations uh, about leg holsters that you can wear so you can't see your concealed carried weapon. Oh, I don't know why, he, what he's saying over there, but uh, this is how crazy it is. I don't know who's sending these things. It certainly is not what I believe and where I go to, but that's how crazy it is that you can get a concealed carry weapon license in the mail. So listen to what's going on. Do not allow one thought of separating from your brothers and your sisters, whether their opinions agree with yours or not. We have one heart, although not one opinion. I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Please prepare your hearts and minds for worship and vote. Would you all stand with me as we continue to worship, singing for all the saints.
us pray. Loving and holy creator, as we gather this morning, we find ourselves surrounded by the memories of so many who have gone before us. We remember those on whom, whom you built the church, those who shared the faith from generation to generation, and those who have modeled what it means to live like Christ. May our voices join with all the saints today as we sing our praises to you. Amen. Well, good morning, Glendale. How are you doing today? How are we doing today? Are we doing good? All right, are you ready for a welcome with somebody else than Alan? Yeah. All right. All right. So we at Glendale UMC want you to know that no matter where you've come from or where you are going, no matter what you believe or what you may be doubting, hold on, what you are feeling or just not feeling, what do you have or what you don't have, no matter who you love, no matter how you identify or the color of your skin, all of who you are is welcomed into this community by a faith, by a God who loves you, knows you, by name. Thank you. So you probably noticed that David and Laura are back with us this morning, even though you cannot see them. Um, Laura obviously is on the piano doing a beautiful job um, and David is in there with her so that they can be stronger together. Um, so once after the service is over, I'm sure you will want to welcome them back. They've been on vacation the past two Sundays, so we are thankful for them. Um, we are thankful once again for another beautiful morning out here on the lawn. Um, I think we, we get really lucky here at Glendale with our Sunday mornings. So. I'm glad for everyone who is out here able to join us in person. Um, and of course, we thank all of you who are joining us online as well. Um, this morning, we, of course, um, as Carol mentioned, want to lift up our election um, that is happening this week in the United States. Um, and so the prayer I'm going to share with you this morning um, is a prayer that was written by World in Prayer, um, and it's a prayer for the election. So let us pray. Holy and loving God, the mystery of elections and civics and citizenship is upon us. We understand that our loyalties, our citizenship, our priorities are shared between heaven and earth, between here and there, even between my will and yours. You taught us to pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we despair at how that is to be. But we try, we promise, and we will keep trying. Help us not to join the legions of the cynical or the purveyors of division or the arrogance of my way or the highway. Help us instead to yearn and to pray for Arab springs to produce the delight of spring. Help us in our love for freedom to produce the delight of freedom. Help us in the exercise of our citizenship to produce the delight of great citizenship. Despite the inevitability of winners and losers, help us neither to be sore losers nor sore winners. Hold before us the wisdom of Solomon to yearn to know right from wrong and choose the right. God of all nations, we rejoice in signs of hope around your good creation. We know that there are pitfalls and potholes along the way. Let us rejoice in courage and perseverance. We dwell in your ancient promise that we cannot, that we can run and not be weary, walk and not faint, as we journey toward being the people and nations you will us to be. From Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, from north to south and east to west, from Maine to California, from red state to blue, from one ism to another, we choose to believe that Christ is greater than any failure, any weakness, any pitfall or pothole, any candidate, election, or plan. 
With that boldness, we live our citizenship, one foot in heaven, one firmly on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture this morning comes to us from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of God for the people of God. So this Tuesday, if you have not already done so, I hope that you will go to your assigned polling place and cast your ballot for the people you feel best represent your values. But no matter who you choose for our next president, and I mean this for all the candidates from Donald Trump all the way down to Kanye West and everyone in between, they are all imperfect people and they will all make imperfect leaders. No matter who is elected, they won't necessarily be God's ordained leader, but rather they will be an imperfect person chosen by the majority of imperfect Americans who voted or imperfect electors, whichever the case may be. No matter who we elect, they won't bring God back to our country because humans can't take God away or bring God back. Even the leader of the free world is not powerful enough to put God back in her place. I tend to believe that we cannot actually separate ourselves from God, even though we may be going through the darkest hell, as the psalmist recounts in Psalm 139, where can I go from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. The problem is not that God has left us, but rather that we have failed to recognize God in our midst. The letter to the Johannine community in 1 John reminds us that we are all God's children. And as such, when people see us or when we see others, we should see a reflection of the divine. But we also know that this reflection is a dim reflection. It doesn't clearly show us who God is. No one, for example, would look at me and think, oh, God must be a five-foot-tall white woman. That would be silly. But I would hope that when people get to know me, they would see a bit of God shining through me. And then they would meet someone else who might talk differently than me, look differently than me, act differently than me, and they would see God in that person as well. And then they would meet another person and another person, and from all those different images, they might um, come to a better understanding of what God perhaps looks like. They might start to wonder who is this God that exists beyond race and gender and all the other categories that we often use to try and describe humans. And they might add to that picture they are creating of God in their mind when they experience God in nature, when they see a beautiful sunset or watch snowflakes fall to the ground or snuggle with a cat or dog. None of those things alone paint a picture of God, but together they might just be a start. But if you are not attuned to see the things of God, you might just see a man, a woman, a cold day, or a household pet. If you see God acting in the things of this world, it is likely because someone along the way pointed out God to you. A Sunday school teacher, a parent, a grandparent, a friend, a pastor. They gave witness to the work of God in our midst. 
the same as people have been doing for thousands of years. All of the authors who composed our Bible were giving witness to God in their context. Their words have been written down and passed on from generation to generation. But most of our witnesses throughout history have shared their witness orally, passing it on to their children, to their friends, and to other people they meet along the way. Some even give witness mainly through actions and how they treat others. If we think back on some of the saints um, that Glendale has lost this past year, when I reflect on the time I spent with Bob Andrews, he always had a great story to tell. And I think Bob gave witness to God's playfulness. He reminded us that God is a creative God. And I believe that Bob showed us that God also has a sense of humor. I never met Sue Hudgens, but I'm told that she always had a smile on her face and she cared deeply for her community. It seems that she gave witness to God's joy and compassion for all of God's children. Mary Cooper was well known for founding Miriam's Promise here in Nashville, an adoption agency that continues to provide loving homes for children whose biological parents are unable to care for them. She understood better than anyone that each of us has been adopted into the family of God, and as such, everyone deserves the love of a family on earth. And for those of you who heard Brady Teague sing in our own sanctuary, you know that he gave us a glimpse of the beauty of God. Each of these saints have touched the lives of us here at Glendale, but they also each offered a different type of witness. Together they give us a small glimpse into our Creator, and together they have shown me that we worship a beautiful, loving, compassionate God who would not want to lose a single one of us, but also wants us to be able to laugh once in a while. So as we approach election day, a time that I know for many of us has been stressful um, and has induced a lot of anxiety, I want, to I want you all to remember the image of God that you have been given, not just by those saints that we have mentioned today already, but by all the saints, past and present, who have given witness to you. No matter who is elected on November 3rd, or whenever they end up making that final decision, our God will still be God. Our God won't leave us. We can't take God away or bring God back. Again, none of us are quite that powerful. But we can choose whether we will continue to look for God and whether we will continue to give witness to God. And we may need to ask ourselves, are we willing to show Christ not just to our friends and family, but also to those who may have voted differently than we did? What kind of witness will your life give? Will you show a kind, compassionate, loving God, or will the picture you show reflect only your fears and anxieties during this time? I think that is a question that we can all ask ourselves this week as we prepare for the results of whatever the election will be. But we can take heart knowing that we serve a loving God that will not leave us no matter what. So let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the many witnesses that you have placed in our lives. We give you thanks for this faith tradition that has been shared down through the generations. And we thank you for the assurance you give us that you will not leave us, but you will continue to walk with us no matter what. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday, um, if you were here, we had a wonderful time on this lawn hunting candy and playing games. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Regina and Walter, who I think are here today in the back, um, and also Caddy and Becca, who did all the planning and set up for that Halloween party. And I know in this season, of this pandemic season and the social distancing, um, it's it's been hard to figure out ways to continue to minister to the community, so I'm so thankful that we are able to do that um, in different ways, including holding a little Halloween party for the children.
So that has been a blessing. Um, I invite you at this time, if you wish to make a donation, there are ways that you can do that. Um, you can find those links on our website. We had to make some adjustments because of our, uh, one of our microphones was not working this morning. Um, so thank you for your patience as we figure those things out. Um, as we come to the table of the Lord this morning, I remind you that Christ invites each and every one of us to this table, asking only that we bring a repentant heart. And so I invite you to join me um, in a prayer of confession this morning. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for each and every one of us, proving God's love to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. I am forgiven. We are all a forgiven people. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those 
that we name before you this morning. And I will invite Stephen to come out and ring the bell as we read through our names. Bob Andrews. Janet Charlton. Mary Cooper. Thelma Cooper. Juanita Donaldson. Harold Gunther. Cheryl Hamilton. Amy Heckman Hostetler. Mary Ann Huffaker. Mary Sue Hudgens. Larry Lindsay. Beth Markham. Geraldine McDaniel. Virginia Rosser. Michael Shires. Billy Allen. Dr. Tommy W. Allen. Charlie Corlew. Katie Corlew. Cully Craig. Will Craig. Naomi Florentino Bustamante. Chris Ford. Jeffrey Gendron. Jane Hershey. Matthew Stephen Holland. Dina Holland. Phil Holland. Jordan Julian. Jack A. Keller Sr. Derek Lee. Paul Lee. William Lee. Laura Lovell. Marshall Lovell. Marvin Lovell. Peggy McLeod. Emily Parker. Pledger Parker. Dylan Pittman. Rosalie Shy. Marilyn Elaine Sinclair. Betty Taylor. Dean Thornhill. Francis Thornhill. Hugh Thornhill. Harold Walker. Scott Walker. Kathy Woodruff. And we remember all those who have died of COVID-19. And all those who have died because of the color of their skin. And all those who have died because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. And we now invite you to say aloud or comment in our live feed any other names that you would like to remember this morning. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And together, as the children of God, we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is Christ's body given for the world. The blood of Christ poured out for everyone. I will remind you once again that the table of the Lord is open to all. You do not need to be a member of Glendale. You do not need to be a United Methodist. But all are invited to partake. Um, As we bring communion around this morning, please just hold out your hands if you would like to receive. Let us thank God, thank God for this meal. God, we thank you that you poured out Jesus Christ in love to each of us. We thank you for the mystery of this meal and how, how it fills us no matter how empty we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you all stand and sing for all the saints that we have known?
has brightly shown whose lives were lived in service here though absent now we sense them What's going on today? We have uh, some things to celebrate this morning. Uh, first off, uh, the flowers um, on the altar this morning, of course, if uh, you are a pastor or a liturgy nerd, do you know that they are the wrong color? Cherie, did you notice that? Um, Matt. Um, so, uh, but uh, either, uh, no matter if they're white or um, another color, um, we uh, give glory to God uh, for all those who have gone before us. Um, and um, specifically, um, Laura's dealt with a lot of loss over the last year, um, and David has as well. So um, these flowers um, are to be given to Laura uh, following the service um, as we remember Virginia Rosser, who she lost this year. We have one birthday this week. Ann Williams has a birthday today. I want to thank uh, David Charlton, wherever he may be. There he is. Um, David's going to start helping us with um, our worship technology and sound so he has a passion for that and we want to uh we want him to uh share his passion and his uh skills here with us at glendale so if there's any way that you any of you would like to get involved in any way here uh, know that that invitation is always open uh, our small groups are meeting this week book club is meeting uh today at one uh they're reading inspired by rachel held evans you can always jump into that um, our prayer group is not meeting this Tuesday um, since it is election day. So another reminder, if we can't say it enough, go vote if you haven't already. Uh, our Bible study is this Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, next Sunday following worship is um, our charge conference. And so that, that term might not be familiar to everybody, but uh, every year um, United Methodist local churches have what's called a charge conference. And it's where we look back on the past year and see um, all the celebrations uh, that we've had, all the things that we've done, um, and also plan for the future. We look at our financial situation um, and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, we will be streaming that um, live right after worship next Sunday on Facebook. Or if the weather is beautiful, I mean, it was supposed to be frigid, I think, this morning um, when I looked at the weather this uh, earlier this week, and here it is. It is not even jacket weather almost. So uh, no, take, yeah, I was like getting hot out there. So um, 
uh, another reminder that our Advent cookbook um, and devotional, daily devotional, uh, we're still seeking um, uh, your photos and your devotions and your prayers and your uh, Christmas memories. Um, so if you uh, would like to share any of um, your creativity, um, please uh, talk with Pastor Steph uh, to get it in that book. I think that is all. So last Sunday, if you were here, um, you saw that we started learning some sign language. I think that got cut off for the, from the live feed. So if you, if you weren't here last week, last week we learned hug, which is this. Um, so you can give your friends a hug without actually touching them in this time of COVID. Um, so this morning I wanted us to learn I love you, um, which looks like this. Um, in a way that you can kind of remember this, apparently I is this shape. Um, L is this shape in sign language, and then the U is that middle part. So those put together are I love you. Um, so I hope this week that you will be able to give some I love yous to people, even if they're um, people who might be voting for you differently. Um, go out remember, remembering that you give witness to God, um, to everyone that you meet. So go in peace to be that witness and that light for Christ. Amen.